You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Island View with hosts Teresa O'Leary and Marshall Freeze. Welcome to Island View, a current affairs show about Gabriola Island. I'm Marshall Fries. This week we have coverage from last weekend's National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. But first, Teresa looks ahead to the 27th annual Thanksgiving Studio Tour in an interview with Carol Ferguson of the Gabriola Arts Council. Very soon, the 27th annual Thanksgiving Studio Tour will take place on Gabriola Island. And here is a little guidebook that's been created by the Gabriola Arts Council. And I'm joined by Carol Ferguson, the Executive Director of the Gabriola Arts Council. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So tell me all about the Studio Tour. It's been going on for 27 years. It's a very successful tour, I believe. So tell me, tell me what you can about it. Oh my goodness, there are so many things that I can tell you about the studio tour. And yes, it has been going for 27 years. And there are some artists on the tour that have been on every single tour. They wow. are diehards. We love that they're still with us. And uh, the tour is a special time. Um, people register for the tour in January. So they have to make a commitment a long ways out. And then they spend the rest of the year preparing for the tour. And in September and October, it gets really frenzied and you can feel the creativity in the air as the artists are painting and sculpting and, and transforming their studios into galleries in preparation for visitors. So it's obviously an important event for the artists, economically, as well as just getting their name out there. Absolutely. This is a really important uh, tour for the artists economically. Uh, last year, the artists um, reported sales of over $150,000. So that's significant when you spread that over about 50, 55 to 57 studios. Some people have told me that some of the artists on the tour actually survive or get their biggest earnings during this event, sort of like Christmas for the retail outlets. They make their big money in the Christmas period, you know? Is it similar? I don't know if that's a true statement, but somebody said that to me. Um, it's it's a, a statement that people believe. I don't think that there are artists, any artists on the tour that solely survive on their um, receipts from the studio tour, but definitely it's a significant portion of their annual income, for sure. Right, and there was some study in 2010 that revealed uh, that the artists on Gabriola, they had a very, very high number of them that are actually making a living on their art, from their art. Yes, absolutely. That was the Canada Council for the Arts, and it was actually 2011. Okay. Um, they did a study across Canada to see the concentration of professional artists in uh, certain areas, and uh, Gabriola came in ninth out of the entire country for concentration of professional artists. So a professional artist is someone who makes their living from their art. That's quite impressive. And I would say it's probably higher today. We've had quite an influx of professional artists over the last few years, especially uh, during COVID, uh, because people were getting away from the city and uh, really liking the idea of island life and uh, a slower pace. And with technology today, you can be anywhere in the world and take care of business. This is true. So let's get back to the studio tour. Um, I feel like I'm a, new, I'm a newbie here on Gabriola Island, so this will be my first tour. So I need some guidance. There's a lot of artists, there are a lot of studios to visit. 
Please guide me. <laughs> okay. The first thing you want to do is uh, get your studio tour brochure, which you have. That has a brief description of every artist that is on the tour, where they're located, and a small example of their work. Then inside the brochure, there is a map so you can orient yourself with where each studio is located on the island. And that helps you chart a course. But the best thing you can do is come to Tour Central, which is located on the upper floor of Nova Boutique and Gallery in the village. And there we will have an example from every artist that is on the tour. So you can have your guidebook and you can walk around the gallery and take a look at the art uh, in person and say, oh, I really like this. Mark it on your brochure and say, I want to go to this to, with this studio. Right. And that happens every year. People, they got their guides and they're walking around and they're charting their course and they're like, oh, well, I'll see this one too because it's right next door. So it really does give you a feeling um, of what you want to see and who you want to see and then planning out your three days of touring. Right. And how many people come to the uh, event usually? Is there a general number every year? Yes, generally it's about 2,000 to 2,500. Um, it's increased over the last couple of years because um, the Gabriel Arts Council has increased the advertising um, across the Big Island and right down to Victoria and Souk, uh, which is a high concentration of art lovers. So we get those people coming up uh, the island for the day to tour around. Um, we've seen a definite increase in off-island visitors in the last couple of years. Last year especially, artists reported uh, that over 50% of the visitors to their studios were from off-island. And this is a really important fact because locals shop uh, artists all year long. There are different markets and fairs and their studios are open at different times during the year and they have their favorites and they go back time and time again, right? What we really rely on for the artists is off-island um, visitors who are seeing their art maybe for the first time and who are coming with uh, the purpose of, of buying. So it's a, it's a really great experience for, for the artists to have off-island visitors and fresh faces coming through their, through their galleries. Right. So could you tell me about the range of artists that are in the tour, just in terms of the types of art that we're talking about? It's vast. Mm. It is really vast. Mm -hmm. There's textile artists, there's woodworkers, metal artists, sculptures, painters, acrylics, oils, watercolors, mixed media, glass. It's it's really quite incredible the the level of skill and artistry that is represented on the tour is absolutely unbelievable. It blows my mind every year when I hang the when I hang uh, the tour central, the preview gallery, the art comes in and I always sit back and just take some time to soak it all in because it's hard to imagine that on a tiny island of 4,500 people that we have this much talent in one place. How does it compare to other islands? Because lots of people think that all the Gulf Islands are filled with artists. The Gulf Islands are filled with artists. Um, artists are, are drawn to island life and uh, to you know, building their studios and not having to worry about code if it's under 10 by 10, you know, <laughs> and um, having an alternative lifestyle and, and surrounding themselves with like-minded people. And I think that's what makes uh, Gabriola and the other Gulf Islands so incredible is the like-mindedness of the people that gather there. What do you think that that like-mindedness or that mindset of the artists What's there that can help the rest of our society right now in the difficult times that we've been, you know, experiencing with climate change and the pandemic? Would you, would you have something to say about that? Absolutely. I think that everyone can learn so much from artists. Um, I'm getting emotional thinking about it because they have taught me so much to stop and not be so concerned with the fast pace, to take a moment and appreciate the place where you live, to appreciate the people that are around you. 
And to create something, it doesn't mean you have to be a master painter or a master writer or, or musician. It means that you're expressing yourself in an artistic format and that will bring you joy in ways that you probably don't recognize without doing it. It sounds like working for the GAC or the Gabriola, Gabriola Arts Council has enriched your experience in life. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's changed me forever. Um, I have made lifelong friends uh, with the Arts Council and had so many amazing experiences with artists and their eccentricities. That's what I love about them the most. Um, a common term is, is when I'm dealing with artists is they even say it themselves, it's like herding cats because they're all so very different and they're working on their own timelines. And so my job has been for the last three and a half years is to work with them and not try and make them fit into a mold that I have predetermined, but to see where they're coming from and make it fit what I need. Right. So what are your expectations for this year's event? I think it's going to be a fabulous event. Uh, I think we'll get a lot of off-island visitors again. The advertising and marketing has been strong. The interest has been strong. It's the first year that I've had people from off-island um, contacting me to mail them brochures, which is fantastic. Um, we only we have only have so much budget to distribute brochures on the on the Big Island, so it's nice that people are reaching out. Uh, a lot of traffic on the website, which is great. Uh, Thearts.ongabriola.ca is where you will find um, all the studios, examples of their work, and a digital map that you can access through your mobile phone, which is super convenient when you're uh, going around the island and going down uh, small back roads, gravel roads that you don't really know where you are. So it's a handy, handy tool. Well, it's funny you mention that because I did notice that in here you have the helpful help full tips for the tour. Start at Tour Central, which you've already outlined. Wear comfortable and practical shoes. Slip-ons are very convenient and a great idea. I love that. Very detailed but lovely. Well, I'll tell you why that's important is because um, artist studios are sometimes their living rooms or um, areas that they don't want dirty shoes. So you have to take your shoes off at the door to go in and, and visit the studio. So having slip-ons is super convenient. Okay, great. Then look for our tall white flags and studio number signs to help find the address you're visiting. So that's a very helpful tip. Keep yourself hydrated. Love that you're taking care of people. And then I love this one. Watch for deer and turkeys while driving around the island. Now, it happens that people get they hit the turkeys and the deer. Well, they don't hit them, but it's, <laughs> it's for people who are, who are not used to driving around Gabriola, we have quite a concentration of turkeys and, and deer, and they don't necessarily move as quickly as you want them to. So it's just to make people mindful that we do have wildlife on the island, just like the, the growls banner that's at the ferry, reminding everybody, you know, there's a lot of wildlife on the island, so be mindful. Right, right. And the final one is, if you see a car with four-way flashers, move over. They are a first responder. <laughs> so that's also Very good important. advice, yes. yes. So Carol, are there any concerns among the artists or the council about this year's event? I'd say the only concern that I have, we haven't really discussed it, I haven't discussed it with, with many artists, is the economy. Um, it's the big white elephant in the room and with interest rates the way they are and people tightening up their belts and, and concerned about what the future holds, uh, there is some concern about what the buying is going to be when it comes to art. But on the flip side of that, um, there are a lot of people on this planet that have a lot of money and that do love art and that will come to events like the studio tour and buy things for their homes or their second homes or as gifts. Uh, gift giving is a big, a big thing on studio tour because of course we're on our way to Christmas. So um, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll all work out in the end, um, but it is something that we just have to be mindful of. Right. What's the age group of the artists that are involved in the tour? Do you that's have any a, idea? That's a really good question. There's definitely a lot of artists in their 50s and 60s. 
uh, even a few artists in their 70s. Uh, but I'd say mostly in their 50s and 60s. Let's see, are there any? Yep, there are some artists in their 40s. Uh, for sure. I haven't polled them. I haven't asked them to see their driver's license, so I'm not 100% sure. Right. Uh, but that's about that's about right. And this year you have some new artists, I was reading in the guide. Yes, we have nine new artists on, on the tour this year, and that's wonderful. It's always wonderful to have new artists. Um, it's sometimes a challenge for new artists because tour goers have their set roots of, of who they want to visit but then it can also be amazing for new artists because then there are tour goers that love seeing anything that's new so I mean it really is a mixed bag there's no way to predict it whatsoever the artists have done their own promotion um, we do uh, recommend to the artists that they don't um, rely just on Arts Council promotion that it is their responsibility to promote their own studios which they have been doing. Um, part of our promotion is uh, social media and I have to give a huge shout out to Kathy McIntyre, uh, the Administrative Systems Manager at uh, the Gabriola Arts Council. She is also our social media manager and she has done an absolutely fantastic job of promoting each of the studios. It's just incredible and the artists have loved it. And how many are there again, can you remind me, studios and artists involved? There are 50, is it 57 studios? Now I'm wondering if I'm mixing it up with 2022. 50, 56 studios and 65 artists. Okay, and that's more than last year? It's about the same. About the same. About the same as last year. Okay. Yeah, the largest studio tour um, happened in 2019, and there were 83 artists, uh, 83 studios on, on that tour. I see, and I guess the pandemic had an impact in the years that followed? Yes, 2020, we were all ready to go for studio tour, um, but then the regulations came down, so we officially cancelled studio tour, but then we had an untour because the numbers were up, the brochure was out, the advertising had been done, and so studios opened, and the reports back for that were they did quite well. Wow because people coming to their studios were had intent. They were there to make a purchase uh, instead of just being a looky-loo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 2021 um, got better, definitely better. 2022 was excellent, and we hope 2023 is even better. Right, okay. Going back to yourself, what motivated you to get involved with the council uh, three and a half years ago? Well, I saw it as a great challenge. Uh, being the, the executive director of an organization like the Gabriola Arts Council is, um, is a challenge. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of skills that you need to bring to the table. And so I decided to um, take a gamble and apply and went through the interview process and was ultimately the successful candidate. I have learned a ton uh, through the process and have enjoyed all three and a half years. Um, it's actually even more than three and a half now, um, almost four. So yeah, it's been a, an amazing experience. I've learned a lot and uh, I would do it again. What was your experience as a child or a young person in terms of the arts? Was it something that you were interested in then or did that come later? No, as a, as a child, I was a, a Royal Conservatory kid. I took uh, piano for many, many years and theory. And I also did art all the time when I was a child and I took art classes in school. Um, I loved the creativity. Uh, I'm a very creative person, creative problem solver, if you will. And uh, it's something that I would like to get back to. I've been so busy that I haven't been able to do any of my own practice. I do a little photography uh, with some fun, um, uh, a little plush animal that I take around and do shots around Gabriola. Uh, their name is Pat. Pat I the see. cat, I yes. See. Pat the cat? Pat okay. the cat. And I, I like doing um, micro photography as well. What's that? Taking a super, super close up so you can't really tell what it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To find artist artistry in different textures and right, right. Yeah. And do you think you that artistic sensibility will that be nurtured in the future? I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Okay. So this is my first year, as you know, going to this studio tour. Last bit of advice for me, please. 
<laughs> That's a really tough one. My last bit of advice of going on the tour is don't set your expectations too high. Okay. Don't think that you can hit all the studios. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would rather that you spent quality time at fewer studios than just zoom in, zoom out at many studios. The artists really dislike that when people just zoom in and zoom out and they know they haven't actually looked at everything mm -hmm. that's in the studio. Mm -hmm. it's, it's disrespectful. So spend your time and if you only get to five studios for the whole tour, well that's five more artists that you didn't know before. Right. So any final thoughts about this year's event that you uh, would like to share with our audience? Well I'd just like to let people know that we're having our opening night on Thursday, October the 5th and it is at Tour Central at Nova Boutique and Gallery in the Folklife Village. It starts at 7, we have some wonderful musical guests. Uh, you'll be able to take a look at the gallery as well as um, maybe rub shoulders with a few artists if they're not too busy setting up their studios for studio tour. And uh, there will be a cash bar as well. So it's a great chance to come out and meet people and, and talk about art and celebrate uh, the artists of Gabriola. Thanks so much, Carol, for coming in and speaking with me. Thank you for having me. You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television, for you, by you. Last Saturday was the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation in Canada. We visited the Gabriel Museum to record the events taking place there. Okay. Welcome everyone to um, National Truth and Reconciliation Day and welcome to um, this event in honor of remembrance of all the children. Um, it's a serious time but we also can do a bit of celebrating. Um, I'd like to introduce Artist Cooper, who is going to do our territorial acknowledgement. Um, and Geraldine Manson, who will be speaking about her new book she's launching, and she has some surprises for you. Lovely. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Ardeth Cooper. My traditional name is Kamchatsia. It's a name I hold from my grandmother, Grandma Sue. Um, she was from Souk, as was my father, and that's where I grew up. Uh, we have links to Pachidot with my grandpa, Quisto. And my mother was from Snenemo. She was a Wesley from Snenemo. So I join you in the pride and enjoyment of making this beautiful place our home. I also want to say that on this day, this sad day, that we can take some, some joy in where we find ourselves right now. I was reviewing the um, museum's um, land acknowledgement, and they start off by talking about, um, with humility, acknowledging the 10,000 years of Snenemo people being here and honoring the Coast Salish heritage here. Um, and I want to say that that's particularly gratifying to me because when I moved here some 20 odd years ago, the museum was totally focused on settler culture. And it's with such pride that I, um, I share with you that now, thanks to the work of Joan and Gloria Felix and other board members who are not here, that now they celebrate Stenemo culture. And the reason I point this out is because it's, it's one thing, it's one big accomplishment, but those are the kinds of accomplishments that we can each make in our lives every single day just by waking up every morning and deciding to um, live in a principled, aware existence. And with that, I'll hand it over to Geraldine and thank you for your attention. Awesome. See him, Estimo. See him, Sol Juan. 
Antipatsatasia, Sanemo. It's two ears all. Heitzapa Konzalipska Geep on a quail. It's two ears all. Good morning, good afternoon. As you know, my traditional name is Satasia from Sanemo. E Kunitam Sna, Elder Geraldine Manson. And it's always always an honor to stand before you greeting my friends, my beautiful elders here on this island. So many new friends I have connection with from coming over here so often and thanking each and every one of you today for coming to be with us, to recognize the significance of every child matters. The history of who we are and the legacy of this day. I, Geraldine, am a residential school survivor, as you know, and know the impacts of what that brings, not only to me, but to my family. But as we move forward in the future, we embrace to understand how love can turn things around and how we embrace family today. And but how we always remember those who never made it and those who still struggle in today's world and those who are lost on the street because of the addictions because of who they are and not able to face and have no support to bring them to the understanding of today's world. Many of us were support what we received back in the days were beautiful community, beautiful elders who embraced us to instill this beautiful culture that we hold dear to learn how to forgive as it was not ours to hold forever, but to remember as always. So today, it's about remembering, but it's about remembering how we as individuals could support and understand those who still struggle out there and where we can fit in and help in communities, in towns, in cities, where we stand and what we can do. This island, as you know, the book I wrote, Sonemo Mostimo, tells a few of the legacies of our ancestors and I am so honored to have this now published and supported through the new society and how beautiful the book has come to be. So my hands are raised to the team from that office. So with that, I want to bring forward another singer, Patrick, to open us up with a beautiful song that he has in commemorating this day, Haichika. Haichika, Siam Sokwan, Stasia. Just really grateful to be here with you, Gabriel Inns, <laughs> Islanders. <laughs> always, always here to invite us with open arms. You know, but I came here before on the island. I want to thank Shnanemoch. You know, Shnanemoch has been my home for 23 years. And we share the longhouse now, because our longhouse in Stamenis is getting renovated. 
and we're sharing our home again. I heard a long time ago when they didn't have a longhouse, they would all go to our longhouse and walk down into Staminas. Now we're, we're bunking at their big house now. So I want to say that instead of a land acknowledgement, because we're not too much squalowing, see him, not too much mustimo, sharing each other's kitchen, sharing each other's home to do our culture ways, our, our longhouse, see how in ways. Just really want to thank Sanemo for that. We're still working together as a people. And I, I'm going to sing a song. It's called, uh, We Are Excited You've Come Home. And uh, I want to say that to the residential school survivors that came home but also helping us, us kids who didn't make it home, but help them get home in the spirit world. Um, you know, it's, you know, cause I, I said to my grandma, we need to make a song as if we had culture when those kids came home. We need to be excited that they're home now. We need to make a song for that. So that's what we did, me and my grandma. She can't be here today, my grandma Marguerite James Penelicate. My mom, people think she's my mom and when they ask where my mom is and I know it's my grandma they're asking, I tell them where she is. So she's at home right now, not feeling well. She loves to travel, my grandma. She's all over the United States and traveling so but she's learning to slow down but you know it's hard to slow that spirit down when you've been doing it forever so I'm just really grateful for my grandma grateful for to be here to be with you uh, I think I'm not gonna use the mic to sing so if you can hear me you can hear me if you can't move up <laughs> So I, I was going to use a mic, but I think I won't. Haichka. So it's, we are excited you've come home to the residential school survivors. That's what we're saying. My spirit is happy you've come home. Our spirits are happy you've come home. It's to honor our residential school survivors here now and the ones that are in the spirit world. So uh, just really want to explain that. You know, we're excited you've come home. I tap to see him. And it's warm. <laughs> Still 
I just remembered, um, you know, that first beat, because I'm a paddler, I go, on a, I go on tribal journeys every summer, and I had a vision of our kids coming in on the canoe, that's what that first beat is, right? So that's why I have that beat, so it's like bringing them home to the beach. And then the faster beat is that excitement that those um, parents their kids are coming home and they should feel excited. You know, the reality is some of the kids didn't come home, right? They didn't. And imagine, I can't even imagine that feeling those parents had. Their kids didn't come home for 365 days, right? They missed Christmases, they missed all the holidays. Imagine that. I have a three-year-old daughter. And I couldn't even imagine someone taking my mana, my child, right? So I, I really, you know, so that's why I made that song for our residential school survivors, because we still, we, we need to celebrate. Some of them are still here. They're here, they're thriving, they're moving forward. But we also need to remember the ones that didn't, right? So I, I sing for here and I sing for the spirit world because we're doing that connection both. So I just really wanted to explain that. Haichka. I think it's important to kind of share a bit of my story at the age of six when I was taken. You see, I didn't know, I didn't even know this story until my aunts, because I was born in Kelm River. I didn't know my parents, and it was my aunties and, that told me this story when I was older. At the age of six, I was taken, we were taken, and placed in Port Alberni Residential School. where we stayed. And like Patrick said, many didn't get to go home for holidays. I was one of them. We never celebrated birthdays, holidays. So when we were in residential school, from the age of six, to the age of 12, I had no memory. 
it was like I had as what do you call that? Memory loss. It was until they put me into Port uh, Alert Bay. Some of the thoughts came back, the fear, because again, my hair was cut, not a fancy cut. And the girl beside me was crying. And as I'm watching her get her hair cut, the bugs were falling out into the sink. And that's the first time I ever seen such a thing. So my hair was cut short, like a bob cut. And I was crying. And then in the evening, the girls beside me, either side of me, wet your bed, wet your bed, you'll be safe. I didn't know what they were talking about. Wet my bed. Then in the lights all went out and the girls were whimpering. And I, my heart started beating because I didn't know what was going on. Because I'm new. And then I heard the girl crying. And then all I seen this shadow, this person carrying the young girl into the washroom, dark, with a headlight. And then next morning, the girl was gone. So the game the next night, wet your bed. And then the fear. You can hear the footsteps coming into our space again. But this time it was by my bed. Fear caused me to wet my bed. Because we were told to wear a nightgown with no undergarments. All I remember was my blankets being taken. And lifted off. But because I wet my bed, the blankets went back on. I cried and I cried. That morning, when the supervisors came in, she stood, we all had to get up, stand by our bed and our sheet blankets were pulled out. She stood by me and she said, bedwetter, you're a bedwetter and you're just turning 12 today, you're a bedwetter. I said, what? I'm 12? I'm 12? It's my birthday? I didn't care if she was yelling at me and calling me a bedwetter. I was excited because it was my birthday because I never knew how old I was. My punishment for that day was to gather my wet bedding and bring it down to the basement and hand wash it. Skip breakfast. But while I was down there, again, approached by this male supervisor, and again, was forced. If you don't do what I, I want you to do, I'm going after your sister. I said, what? My sister's here? I didn't know that. So all these things that happened, 
I had to get back up and scrub the steps. We were on third floor. And we were I was giving a pail and a toothbrush and a bar of soap to scrub from top to bottom with this bar of soap and water. I'll never forget that. But it didn't matter. March 20th was my birthday. I re always remember that. And I remember meeting up with my sister in the beach where we had picnic with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And she was crying, telling me her story about what happened to her. And we cried and we cried and we said, we're going to hide. We're going to swim across to the other side. And she was younger than I am. So we hid in a bush and got dark and we see the lights. And we cried as we realized we weren't, we couldn't make it. We couldn't swim that far. And pretty soon we seen the flashlight looking for us. And we got caught. We got punished again. I never get, get to see my sister again. We didn't get to see each other until we were released and got to go home for a bit and placed into foster homes. Didn't get to see no parents, no grandparents. I was so bitter. I hated the world because of what they did to us. Seven foster homes in one year. I was rebellious until I hit Nanaimo. And then I got to meet Sonamo Reserve. And I was told that was my mother's reserve. I was excited because my sister brought me. But then I met the apple of my eye, I called him. He introduced me to his mother. And over time, we continued to date while I stayed in foster home, rooted, went to John Barsby. Till the day came, I was 15, just, going, just about going to be 16. sat with his mother and said, I think there's something wrong with me. I'm sick. Can't keep anything down. I'm throwing up. She said, I think we better take you to the doctor. So she did. Dr. Dudley, his name was. Geraldine? Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> yeah. Well, Geraldine, you're pregnant. No, I'm not. I can't be. Why? Because my friends told me that the only way you can get pregnant is if you French kiss. <laughs> and I never let him French kiss me. <laughs> Oh, Geraldine, you got lots to learn. <laughs> You're pregnant. So he told me everything how I got pregnant. I said, oh my God. So I went out into the waiting room and I told his mother and I was crying. I told her what happened and she said, oh, Gerald, oh, Jerry. She called me Jerry. Oh, Jerry, you got lots to learn. To bring it to the nine months, because uh, I was still in foster care, time the baby was born, my son, 
It wasn't a happy moment. They took him away from me and put him into another foster home. I didn't get to hold him. I didn't get to love and nurture him. That angered me so much. I ran away again. I ran right to my mother, my apple on my eyes mother. She was the one I stayed with. She was the one that helped take, helped to go to the courts to get him back. It took a year, but we got him back. And she was the one that introduced me some beautiful elders to say, we're going to get that wild stallion out of you. And we're going to replace it with culture and who you are. Seventeen years, I was with them. Seventeen years, my mother-in-law blessed me to be who I am today. The book that I published was because of them. And she said at one of the gatherings we were in the church basement, you will be our eyes, our voice, and our legs when we can no longer do so. I never knew what she meant then. I do now. Klimtanat was her name. Yawinat was another. Some beautiful elders that gave utmost sharing of knowledge that they had and instilled it with me. We walked the land, shared stories, songs, taught me how to love and trust. But the pain comes back now and then because they're not there anymore. So it's only through prayer that I'm connected to them. The power of prayer is so beautiful to our ancestors, to our elders of elders. So I am so fortunate and humble even though I have pain and scars from the residential school, I am blessed. This is my great-granddaughter. Hi, Zepka. Hi, I'm Zepka. I'm Zepka. Hi, Auntie. Can I give you a hug? I didn't know I was going to speak again. Really want to thank my auntie or my elder sharing your vulnerability, your tears, your story. It takes courage takes lots of courage and strength to get emotional you're talking about Tiger Man. You know, my brother Derek's one of my closest bros. So I really got emotional hearing that. So I love you, Auntie, and you know, I'm pretty much adopted a Manson. I'm always with the Mansons. <laughs> Still with them, got to ride with my Auntie. Colleen there, Manson, Jean. She was beside me on the canoe, and we're still beside each other today. And um, so I'm really, really grateful for your family, you know, and uh, so I just really want to honor you first before I speak, you know, that you can feel that, you know, Cham, you know. So, yeah. Um, I'm just really grateful for for this day. 
you know, I've I've been doing my own intergenerational. Must be the creator. Oh, did I die? Oh. Yes, creator. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Oh, I don't tell them that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> tell them the truth. Okay. Hello? Hello? Testing, testing. One, two, three. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm going to sing a song for Auntie. And, um... Uh, it's it's called Our Women Are Sacred. And um, I was just telling um, Colleen, I said, we should get together. Who wants to learn that song I sung at first? Teach it to whoever wants to learn. And this song I'm going to sing, it's called Our Women Are Sacred. Because the, the creator is telling me, you should sing another song? Because the mic's not working, so... <laughs> So, but I've been doing a lot of my own inter intergenerational healing. You know, uh, one, of the, one of the messages that still kind of linger with our people is, I'll give you a reason to cry. It still kind of lingers in our communities, that saying. That's the impacts of residential school. So I'm, I'm not going to say that to my daughter. I'll give you a reason to cry. It's okay to have feelings now. It's okay to have those feelings. And it's okay to talk. I'm grateful for my auntie that talked today. It's okay to talk about it now. It's okay to trust to talk about it now. You know, slowly the, the survivors are trusting us to tell their story. And it's okay to have those feelings. I'll leave it at that. Because I could go on for days. But I just really wanted to say that that really, that really, uh, that saying spoke to me today. And uh, I'm grateful for our late elder, Ellen White, Grandma Ellen White. I was thinking of Auntie standing beside her when she was getting mentored. And Grandma used to say, she used to come up and say, it's your turn to speak, Grandma Ellen. I said, I don't know how to speak. You're going to learn. You have to learn. Mm -hmm. So, and that's how strict she was. But she loved me. I remember her love. Grandma Ellen White. I really miss her love and I remember her love. And I think she's with us today. She's with us today because I've been thinking of her all morning. Grandma. And then Grandpa Ray Peter, you know, one of my mentors too. You know, so I'm just really grateful. I'm going to sing this song. Our women are sacred. So, Quam Quam Tin and fix your spirit. Thaith it Tin Shkwalawin. You know, my grandma says, stand up tall now. Thaith it, fix up now. Quam Quam Tin Shkwalawin. Ha ha ha. Thun Slaney. Our women are sacred. That's what I'm saying in our language. And uh, we just want to sing a song for auntie and sing a song for the women and um that's what my heart is saying so haichka not in trouble anymore i can sit over here <laughs> I don't have to sit behind the mic anymore. <laughs> Again, I made this song with my grandma, Marguerite James. Our women are sacred. Osiem. Quam, quam, tan, squall away. Quam, quam, tan, squall Oh. 
Also don't know. <laughs> Calling all the women, stand up. All women, stand up, my elders said. I trust. Go to know the warrior song. Women's warrior song, come stand with me. Women's warrior song. grandmothers, for the aunties, for the great-grandmothers, etc. They are the ones very resilient. They are the ones that hold the foundation in every home, in every community. They are the ones. That is what the warrior song is about. Hides him. Well, singing the Yo Hule Hule Hula, it's the Snenemuk paddle song. Uncle Gary, Uncle Gary, he, um, when I first start drumming and singing, he says, Patrick, you gotta lead us into the gathering place, that's the place at VIU. And he, uh, and I was like, ah, I don't lead, Uncle. Well, you are today. <laughs> so I was like, okay, and you know, just, I don't, don't want to, but I will. <laughs> so I'll sing this song, our Snenemokpa song. I learned it on Tribal Journeys with uh, Colleen here. And uh, yeah, one of the first songs I sang actually when I, when I started singing. Hi, Tapka.
Well, I have to say um, that's been one of the most moving TNR days I have, ceremonies that I have been uh, witness to. And thank you for sharing so much, Geraldine. I do have what's called traditional handshakes in my hand here. And they are in honorariums for uh, the elders who have come today to speak and drum and sing for us. And um, Lorna, who's making fry bread behind us. Nadine, who's over in the blue tent doing face painting. And um, <clears throat> there's books here for you to have a look at. And Laura, what's in the other tent? Oh, we have weavers in the white tent we have weavers uh, cedar and wool i think together um so um we would uh i will i would like to give out these traditional handshakes and thank all all of the people from sanemo who came today so geraldine maybe you can help me nadine well she's back there face painting i see so i will take that too Dave, Bodley. I'm sorry, this isn't in one of those beautiful embroidered um, Thank you so much, Dave. So you should Patrick. Patrick? Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Lorna, who is cooking behind us. Woo woo! Yay! <laughs> Lorna! Yay! <laughs> she is very famous now. <laughs> awesome. um, and Geraldine, I don't know how, how I can even thank you so much. <laughs> um, other things that are going to be happening this afternoon is that Dave has agreed to, in the Native Plant Trail, which was just um, launched on Earth Day this year, he's agreed to sit there and do some drumming so you could walk through the Native Plant Trail and hear some drumming for a little bit. Lorna is getting her fry bread ready, so that will be ready for people to, ha to enjoy. And... Um, Yes, have a look at the book tables, go get a little face painting done, and go and visit the weavers. Inside, we have a pop-up. Um, I need help with the pronunciation. A-Lelam. 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 This is um, a group of designers from Sinemo who are making beautiful, beautiful clothing. I'm wearing one of the sweatshirts. Um, and so we have a little pop-up store inside the museum, so you can visit their, the things they've made, which are stunning. And the Eit Lalem, um store, you also can go online and look at all their clothing that they have. Their Aki store is on Rains Road, uh, off of um, up in Cedar area. But it's beautiful. I, um, I can't um, praise them enough for their beautiful clothing line. And uh, they, we did bring just a small amount over here just to showcase some of their work. Uh, they would have came, but uh, they're so busy on the road. So, yes, please take a look at what we brought. Heichka. So... Thank you very much for coming and making this celebration very important. Scow is nearly ready, and there's fry bed ready as well. Thank you so much, everyone on Gabriel Walk.
You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television, for you, by you. Lisa, thank you for talking with me. What did the event we just watched today mean to you personally? For me personally, I think that um, I have a great deal of gratitude for um, Geraldine Manson, who presented to us her lived experience of residential school system and her experience in Port Alberni. A lot of folks think that the day is about a historical event and they don't understand that it is actually really about acknowledging the lived experiences of people who might still be alive, who might be our friends, mm -hmm. who might be our family, who might be our colleagues. Mm -hmm. And today we were given a window into those experiences and I will hold those very precious and dear because it takes a lot of strength to share and to be able to be the kind of person to share in a way that builds others up from your bad experience. And um, Geraldine has been such a cultural beacon for Gabriola. I can only see that will help Gabriola grow in its awareness of um, you know, the history of Canada and how it impacted Indigenous peoples and how we folks who are living here, whether we're Indigenous like myself or whether we're uh, otherwise settlers, how we can actually work with Sinemoc in making Gabriola um, a more traditional place for Sinemoc mm -hmm. and in a way that everyone's comfortable with. Yeah. Do we have a lot of growth to do here on Gabriola? Yes. In this year particularly, I think that um, many Gabrielans have been challenged with um, incidents of racism and, and incidents of hate. Um, I think that it's always going to be growth. Uh, as we have young folks coming up, they, they will need to learn and we'll need to be able to teach them. And so is it a bad thing to have a lot of growth ahead of us? Well, no, not necessarily. And it's taken 150 years um, to get where we are, so we can't get to where we want to go overnight. Uh, it just means a lot of dedication and just really keeping an eye on, on where we're going and understand everyone has that, that has to have that commitment and dedication to always learning more, understanding more, and then working towards, uh, in their own way, um, what reconciliation means. Has your experience as an Indigenous person changed on Gabriola over time, for better or for worse? My um, my lived experience, my, my, my journey as an Indigenous person, I've always known who I am. Mm -hmm. I've not always been able to comfortably talk about it. Oh. And so I think for me the biggest thing is, is now I am absolutely comfortable in who I am. And I'm absolutely comfortable in speaking to that and being who I am, where that's not always been the case. Um, my, my mom is Mohawk Delaware from the Six Nations, it's where her family's from, and my father is a Scottish settler. And so, for a long, long time, it was always, oh, you're not white enough. Oh, you're not indigenous enough. Oh, you're not, you're not enough, you're not enough. And this is something that uh, a lot of folks have grown up with, even if you were raised on, you know, within a community, on the reserve or wherever. And it's, it, it's that voice that I find that over the years I've quelled. And being here, um, I have been able to meet other women, other folks um, who have been on that journey. And like, like even Geraldine showing what, what she has experienced is, is something that strengthens me and says, yeah, I have to use my voice and I, I want to use my voice. Um, I am hoping that um, I can put together a once a month potluck for um, all of the folks of different nations, of uh, indigenous nations who are here on Gabriola. Because we have many, many folks from many, many different nations. And um, it can be very isolating when you're not in your community or you're not in an urban center um, to figure out how to have that connection that you would have uh, if you were with family, if you were with community, with culture and cultural leaders. And so I'm hoping to set that up because I know there are folks who are looking for that and who do need that and there are folks who are wanting to share and and to to bring that um, um, to Gabriola for mm. sure so thank you for taking the time to talk with me you're welcome you're welcome